Welcome to the SubConnect Live Show. I am your co-host, Andre Niemeyer. Candace Appleby is training, but she will be back uh, in the upcoming shows. But uh, today we're going to have an incredible guest here. You know there has been a lot of chatter about the young people coming on the scene going really fast. And especially in the women's field. And today we have Taya Yonjini, all the way from Maui, Hawaii. She has already accomplished amazing results, uh, achieved amazing results. And uh, she's doing incredibly well, not only in, like surfing, uh, channel crossing, flat water racing, but all around. So in one of the most amazing gals to be around, like very wholesome. Tiger and Jenny, welcome to the SubConnect Live Show. Great to have you here. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, you. thanks for coming by. And uh, you've been really busy, but before we get into it, give us a little bit of an insight into your background. So you're from Maui, Hawaii, right? Yeah, I was born and raised in Maui and just kind of grew up in the ocean, started surfing at a really young age. I think my dad had me on the board when I was like 15 months old, and so I've always been a just water baby and um, got into lay down paddle boarding, prone paddling. And, um, and, that's, and that's pretty rough, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's... It's fun. I mean, it's it's just different, you yeah, know. It's yeah. different muscles, and it's really good training for like when the surf is just flat, and you can get out there, and you know, for the summertime, right. and come back in the winter, and you're catching right. all the waves, and <laughs> everyone's like kind of getting back into the role of things, and so that was a really good like cross training for surfing, and and just another excuse to get in the in the water. Right. So you did get into surfing then. So both yeah. surfing and then prone. Yeah, surfing. I started doing like just like little local surf contest um, during the year and then I started doing races with prone paddling and then in 2007 is when I did the Molokai to Oahu for the first time. With, On a traditional yeah, prone traditional board? Yeah, traditional prone board relay. Um, 2007, you were... So I was 14. 14 years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. 14 years old on a traditional paddle board crossing the Molokai Channel. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? Were you solo or relay? No, relay. Oh, yeah. ah. Relay. Well, even then, even even still yeah. relay. Oh, it's it was an amazing experience. I, from the time I started paddling, like when I was 12, I was like, I want to do it. Like, And my dad's like, maybe you should wait just one more year and we'll do it together. And then um, he asked me the next year, do you want to do it? I'm like, mm, I don't know. And then um, Jamie Mitchell had emailed me like, "Oh, my girlfriend wants to do Molokai. She needs a partner. Do you want to? Do you want to go?" I'm like, "Yeah!" Like Jamie Mitchell emailing me like, "Okay, cool." And I trained, and my dad's like, "You know, you need to take this seriously. Like, this isn't just like a fun little paddle that we do on Maui. This is like 32 miles Molokai to Oahu. Like, this is not just a fun play around channel. People die. Like, it's it's pretty intense, yeah. and so I just." kicked down and it was hard because I was 14 all my friends were at the beach you know surfing playing and I had to go paddle and be with my dad and all his friends and just do that you know stick to that training regimen and really just commit myself to it and it was it paid off that's yeah. impressive Ty. I mean when you think about it like one of the greatest watermen in the history of water sports Eddie Aikau died in that channel yeah uh, and uh, and you were 14 years old and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so you've joined the ranks of uh, Riggs Napoleon mm -hmm. and uh, Taya Ganjini and how was that experience? Oh, it was it was amazing. That it, that was probably like the easiest year for me for some reason. I don't know why, but it's just gotten harder each year. Um, I mean, I heard there is this thing called age. But you're still very young, though. That's it. you're still yeah. very young. Yeah. Maybe because you're more competitive, not having as much fun. Like, you, well, not not having as much fun. But you have like greater goals, whereas like yeah. before is like I like, want to survive. Wanna, I want to make it to the finish, and right. then the next year I'm like, you know what? I want to like, I want to break place. a record. I want to place. You know, and um, we ended up getting first place in the women's team division, which was fun and. And, so uh, that's not a bad start. Yeah, so we got a good start, and really that's when my, my training for even this year's Molokai win, that's when it started, because from, from that time when I just started paddling. So you did that one when you were 14, mm -hmm. then you did that cross every year since then? Yeah, like one year I did it three times, and one year I did um, OC1 canoe, and then I did the lay down paddle board, and then six men, so kind of just trying to do all the different sports and I'm sure it helps going back oh, and yeah. kind of reading the channel and from different and levels you know you're up on your canoe and you're just like you know you're from that level and then you're like laying down and then you're standing up and 
got into the stand-up when, I think in 2008, is that's when I did the, or no, 2009 was when I did stand-up for the first time. First stand-up, and then last year, you came, I think it was behind Andrew Mola, and this year mm -hmm. you won. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I remember, like, when you f you came behind Andrea, and I was like, oh, okay, that is something, because <laughs> Andrea is, is she's just, amazing. She's an amazing water woman. She, she oh, all, just all around oh, water woman. Yeah. She, she does prone, outrigger, starts right? jaws, like, she's, I've always looked up to her as, you know, a water woman, and she's always been, like, you know, kind of took me under her wing, and same with Lauren um, Spaulding, and um, amazing paddler just she went to Olympics for um, for kayaking and so I've had like amazing water women and water men in my life that's just kind of poured into me and given me their insight and just getting to paddle and hang out with them and um, I was just stoked to come so close behind her last year I was I think I was like three minutes behind her I'm just like whoa like I can do it I have a chance I'm just three minutes <laughs> but I can do it yeah and my my whole thing is that my like getting second was my first place for me like right. just getting right. second behind Andrea was like amazing and so this year I was like maybe I should change that and like try and really go for like you know for first like why not this is like my this is my event you know like I love the open right. ocean downwind like that's what I commit to and I just love that the lifestyle it gives me right. and um and yeah. how was that moment when here is like this is the person you look up to this is this is hard. your mentor. <laughs> this is like one of the greatest water women around. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't believe, but I just beat her. Does that happen? Is that kind of... Yeah, I don't. I didn't know where I was in the race. Um, I had no clue like if I was in last or... Because it's just such a huge channel. You really don't know until the finish. And um, But my escort boat, they knew. They, they knew the whole time, but they didn't tell me. So you had a very good lead because typically well, we it's were, a big channel, but it funnels... Supposedly we were right next to each other like most of the time and I, I didn't know because I, I saw someone like come to the side I'm like hmm I'm like no just don't think about it focus on what I'm doing and I need to get to the finish you know that's what I need to focus on and once I got I think I had two miles left of the race Lauren was like Talia you have first in the bag now go for a record I'm like wait what did you just say like are you kidding me wait first and wait no go for a record I was like, okay, this is gonna be the hardest two miles. So you also life. did you beat the record? Did you end yeah, up I third by thirty minutes. You beat her record by thirty minutes. Yeah, and then. So how did you process it? How do you process something like I that? I don't know, like because you're still very young. It you're, took me like a couple of weeks to just realize, like, it's you get you know you're on this high and then you're like coming down and you're just like, what did I do? Like, what was that? I, like, I can't. I feel like I couldn't take credit for it. Because when I was out there, I was just like, you, you start with like, when you start the race, it's like chaos, you know, everyone's right next to each other. And then like 30 minutes into it, like you're just no one, no one's around. And you're like, whoa, okay, this is, this is what everyone talks about. This deep water, high seas, this like, you know, huge waves. Was it 2,000 feet deep or something? Yeah, like, like that? something yeah. crazy. And, and I'm like, all right, this is like me. And um, I need to just focus on on catching bumps and reading the ocean, making sure I have a good line. And thank goodness I had um, an amazing escort boat with Lauren Spaulding, I had my boyfriend on there, and they're just, they're both like into the whole like sports psychology and just like the mind game thing. And it's such a mind game out there. And I started with like the little, little lies just creep in when you're out there from the beginning. Like, oh my leash, my leash is too tight. Like I need to take it off. Or my water pack, I don't want to drink water. Like. And you're like, I was like, no, no, like I have to like say no to those lies and move forward. And then sooner or later, I wasn't even thinking about that. It's just like little things that try and creep in. And then, so my, my goal is to kind of focus on knocking down each lie at a time. And once I got to my big wall of just like everything, like my fears, like you just go through this craziness out there and you come to like 22 miles and it's like, can I do that? Like, what am I doing? Why am I out here? Really, like, what? Why do I do this every year? And I just, I broke through it. And it was when they were handing me poi to eat, and um, they're like, Talia, Jesus sweat blood for everyone. So you go out there and you leave everything in this channel. Leave everything you have, because He gave everything for you. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> and I just, from that point on, I just kind of. 
you know, put my head down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave everything I have. And I can truly say I've never given it my all until this past race, until this channel. Wow, congratulations. That's just an amazing story. So, yeah, when I got to the finish, it was like I just had nothing left. I collapsed and I'm just like, I was brain dead. Just, yeah. <laughs> and what a lot of people also don't know is that for in every race you do have to take your course. But when you're yeah. talking about like a 32 mile channel, there is like a whole navigational aspect yeah. that comes in. That's, it's, it's, it's a big portion of the mm -hmm. racing. So how, how does that work? The whole navigation, taking your course? Really, it's like you have to see what the tide's doing. But, you know, hopefully there's wind. Hopefully there's, you know, the tide is everything, really. Like, because this year the tide was amazing. It was one of the best years. And, um, but there, it was actually, it wasn't that windy. It was really windy the day before. And we're all like, yes, this is going to be so good. And, and there was some huge swells out there. I mean, I had some, like, airdrops on my 16-foot board. And You're kidding me. Yeah, like, so. where I'm just, like, bending down, like, almost sitting down on my, on my butt and just, like, whoa, like, insane, some insane rides. <sighs> And, um, yeah, Did you so actually have any free fall where the board detached from the Yeah, the board? I had some falls where like I would fall and I'd do the double fall. So I'd get back on my board and then I'd roll off because I was just at that point where I had no right. energy and you're just, your body's just like kind of going into that shock mode and you're just like, okay, just, I need to focus on just standing up. <laughs> I just need to stand up and yeah, I mean, that's the How whole... How many times do you fall in a channel like that? Near the end, I don't even know. You just, you just start losing it. You Amazing. Know? Well, yeah. Yeah. incredible story, mm -hmm. Talia. Uh, so anyway, that's a little bit about Talia <laughs> Gamjini, a 14-year-old who was crossing um, the channel, and uh, then the, this year just uh, won the Molokai race and uh, beat the record. So uh, really a flipping of uh, coins and having the new Vanguard kind of taking over and really... Uh, shattering the ceiling, if you will. <laughs> so, congratulations, Thank incredible. You. So, we'll be, we're, we're not done yet, <laughs> but uh, we're going to go into a quick commercial break. When, when we come back, Ty is going to give us a lot of insights into gear, fitness, diet, what you can do so that maybe you can come close to what she's doing. All right, so you guys stay tuned and we'll be right back. Simple, sleek, and powerful enough to change the way we live. That's how Surf Tech views the stand-up paddleboard. Our continual pursuit to raise the level of performance and technology is, is why we're the leader in stand-up paddleboards. Our commitment to this philosophy and standard is reflected by our unrivaled 20-year history and foundational belief in technological innovation. A passion for the environment has led to technologies that will not break down and fill up landfills. Ensuring the current and future health of our oceans. Imitators will come and go. We are Surf Tech. 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 Design, performance, innovation, and passion. signature model. Pretty much calling it the all-arounder. It can be used for surfing in waves, racing in flat water, racing in downwind. I decided to go with carbon because carbon's really strong and it's really light. This will not catch seaweed. It still tracks really good. But you can use this in California. I mean, I've paddled through sick, thick seabeds with this. It's got really good release. I'm just really stoked with the finished product and I hope you guys like it.
Okay, and we are back on SubConnect Live with Tyler Gangini, and now we're going to talk about, she's going to teach us how you can climb Mount Everest at the age of 10. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. If you missed the previous episode, we were talking about uh, Talia's background and how she started uh, crossing the Molokai at the age of 14 on prone board. She has also done it on outrigger canoes, stand up paddle board, and last year beat the record. It's an amazing story. Uh, I've interviewed a lot of people. This is one of the most uh, engaging and fascinating stories I've heard. You definitely want to listen to it. So if you missed it, all you have to do, uh, go to YouTube and then watch the archive version and click right here, right here about guests. Okay, right now we're talking about gear, up next technique, and then fitness, and in the archive version you can watch any one of those at any time. So Taya, obviously you've done a lot of R&D, You've had all those experiences in the channel, seeing how your equipment works. Tell us about some of the features, okay, in terms of board design that you said, well, when I did this change to the board or that change mm -hmm. to the board helped me to have a more efficient stroke, paddle more comfortably, whatever it is, that yeah. kind of took you to the next level. Well, I've, I have this, um, an SIC F16 board, and I was training on it. I had it last year, did the channel on it, and I just feel really comfortable on it. And this this year, I, you know, it's kind of getting heavy. It's one of the first F16s <laughs> that um, they made, and uh, yeah. So I, I was just like, you know what? I'm comfortable on the board. I think it's important that you're comfortable on the board that you're going to be paddling on for 32 miles. And so I'll just I'll just use this one. I don't need to go buy a new one because I don't really have any money to buy a new one. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just trained on it all all season and did some long on paddles it worked was working great and then um, it's really important to have the right board in the channel in long distant open ocean kind of stuff you know you don't want to get on the wrong board because then you'll be you'll be out at sea <laughs> with the wrong gear to get out yeah. of the sea and it's like so. we have a you know we use rudders so I have a rudder steering system so you did have a rudder and, and that was a 16 mm -hmm. a six, a 16, 16 feet uh, yeah. 16 foot long yeah and, uh, and the rudder helps. I've paddled an 18-footer with a rudder, and it helps it tremendously because uh, it offsets yeah. the drift, the wind, yeah. and you're able to rest the other side. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to focus so much on like paddling at an awkward you know, position. And um, so that, that helps a lot with, with the rudder. And, um, yeah, so I trained on that all season, and then I think a week before the race, my friend's like, I have a board. Um, like I never really use it it's super light more narrow it's one of the newer boards you want to use it I'm like are you serious I'm like I don't know like I've been comfortable on my board okay I'll try it and I, w I took it on a downwinder I'm like oh my gosh this is a huge difference like just the new equipment that's out there th these days are just right. you know so lighter faster lighter, more narrow right. and um, just e a little bit easier to maneuver and you know when a board's lighter, it's just gonna right. it's gonna go faster. Less weight you're you're yeah. dragging, right? Exactly. So, what have you been paddling paddling these days? As far as like width, uh, nose, do you have anything in particular that you're kind of like, okay, this this made a big maybe tail design, anything, uh, or you basically just people give you all these boards and you pop <laughs> on one and it's like, oh, that's great, I want that one. I know, I'm kind of bad at that. Like I, um, I've been trying different boards lately and stuff and. Um, I was trying one of Joe Bark's board yesterday out in the surf at Cardiff, and it's I think it's 26 and a half um, wide. And That's a very narrow board, right? And yeah, Typically it's 27, 28. Yeah, so I was on that, and it feels really good, and I'm really excited to use it in the battle of the paddle. And um, it's, I mean, and I'm how was the stability to, on that? It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty good. I'm used to such, like, I don't know. Right. And I, I, at home, when I go like stand up surfing, I'm on a 80. 80. So, I mean, for, for, I don't know, some of the guys that are surfing these days are I on know. like 6'6. Six, six. I'm like, what are you doing? This is stand up paddling. Right. Not like short boarding and stand up with your paddle. Like, exactly. <laughs> well, that's what's becoming, <laughs> yeah. right? It seems like. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. So, my, my 80 is small for me. Okay. And it's, How wide is that 80? Um, I think it's like 27. Okay, it's yeah. pretty narrow. Yeah. So, um, so you had, know. yeah, and also it's important to point out that obviously Taya has uh, is at a level of competitiveness and athleticism, having the experience of all the open ocean in Maui, surfing, uh, channel crossing. 
So she brings obviously she obviously has above average balance. <laughs> uh, you you want to work yourself up to yeah. maybe a twenty six, and perhaps twenty six works in flatter conditions, yeah. but not your best board for like an open ocean. I or probably wouldn't want to take that like on a Malika run in Maui because it's. I mean, we have the most windy conditions in the world there. Right. It's like crazy. Well, if we want to surf, we have to wake up at like six in the morning. And then the wind's up Otherwise by seven. Otherwise, it's blown out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're used to more of those conditions. So I've been, I've been trying out different boards and just seeing like what's going to be the fastest and. Um, yeah. So that's good. What about paddle? I mean, I would think. Uh, that uh, so 26 there with Talia and Jenny trying out with 26 in flatter conditions 26 and a half 26 <laughs> and a half that half is the important half makes that a difference. half <laughs> makes a world of difference but if it's you have a lot of chop and swell don't go that narrow maybe yeah you just try something a bit wider but one of the things that might be very important for you is the length of the paddle and also the size of the blade especially yeah. if you're doing long distance channel crossing mm -hmm. anything like that so have you toyed with that at all or yeah. again kind of people have said here try no me definitely what, no. i mean i work with jimmy terrell at quick blade and he's amazing he'll send me stuff and here try this out and um we were all in saluita for the punta saluita yeah. event in mexico and i was you know i was like ah, jimmy like every time i'm paddling i get this my shoulder is just like killing me and i have to like you know, it takes me a couple of days to recover, and he's like, maybe your blades, like, or maybe your, you know, your paddle's a little too long. I'm like, okay. And so um, he gave me a shorter paddle, and I tried it out immediately. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, out my, my shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. And um, I was using a longer paddle to do downwinders, and I switched to a shorter, shorter paddle, and then I'm using their flyweight. Um, which is an 83, and it's it's a smaller blade. So a much smaller blade. A much smaller yeah, blade. And people inches. are like, why are you using that, like, this whole season? I'm like, don't you need, like, a bigger, like, no, like, I, I really like it. My shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. I feel, like, more efficient, and I feel like I can catch bumps easier and just kind of connect and get that quick stroke going, and um, people are kind of laughing at me. <laughs> and... It paid off. I mean, I used it in the Molokai to Oahu and this whole season, and it, I really, really like it. It's super light and. So there you go, an 83 uh, square inch. Uh, a little bit short. Blade I'm and not totally you, positive on the length. But if you put your arms up, do yeah, you know, have any it, idea? I don't, I don't no, I'm no. so bad at that. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But no, but you're right. Like, if and one of the dangers too of going too short, you want to go shorter because your shoulder. Yeah. If it's and I've, again, I've gone through all those phases. So I started actually too short, lower back problem. Mm -hmm. Then I went too tall, yeah. shoulder problem. So you want, if there is one thing that you really want to experiment with uh, is uh, the, the length of your, your yeah. shaft. This Definitely. is, okay, before you buy new boards, before you do anything, before maybe you even buy your first board and paddle, make sure yeah. you play around with the length because you can avoid injury. And, uh, and also how it can help you go faster and be more efficient. I've had, I mean, I had paddles before I had a board. <laughs> yeah. That was my first sponsor, was a paddle sponsor. And I've definitely tried out more paddles than, than boards, I think. And the paddle definitely makes a huge difference. Like, that's something, like you just said, is that's really yeah. important. Yeah, begin with that. Yeah, because so, you can tweak your, your elbow, your shoulders, your back. Like, you really want to have the yeah. right blade. Yeah, I, I've, I've had shoulder, elbow, wrist. Mm -hmm. lower back all of that yeah so yeah you definitely want to tweak with that and 83 that's interesting i i haven't tried that before women that's you know even all the more important because mm -hmm. guys usually they can power their way through things like bigger blades it can depend on like if you're chuck patterson typically you can use bigger blades even though he's also going more towards the smaller blade yeah uh, because it's easier it seems on your like body. more people are i mean me and me and connor were in the philippines together in april and he's like, Talia, your your blade's way too big. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, look at mine. Like, I'm like, oh, okay. And so I went to Jimmy, I'm like, I want a smaller blade. And he's like, okay, try this flyweight. And I love it. It's a huge difference. I mean. And it allows you also for higher cadence, right? It's, yeah. It mm -hmm. comes out easier. You go through the water more easily. Yeah. So there we go. Try it out. That's uh, Talia's Go get, go get your flyweight. <laughs> That's right. Go get your flyweight. Get smaller blades and, uh, and uh, yeah, don't, don't overpower your shoulders or your joints because you'll get injured. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty, so uh, that uh, that was gear, and uh, let's move along here right into technique and get a bit of an insight here into technique. Now, here you probably have like a little bit more of like a personal connection with this as far as something you were doing before as you transitioned from prone to stand up, mm -hmm. and then you went like, okay, uh, I was doing this this way, and now I've changed, and here's where I'm at, and where I'm kind of like comfortable with and has helped me so yeah I, I mean I, I came straight from an OC1 canoe paddling you know background and um, you know that that would help me a lot coming into stand-up paddling because it's just like you know There's a lot of technique. cross section yeah exactly. it's like but you're now you're standing up and um, and what people don't know is that outrigger in outrigger you also use your legs quite a bit oh my gosh so. Huge. I mean, I get the gnarliest cramps in my. Even hips. though you're sitting, and most people don't yeah. know that. Yeah, it's it's a huge like workout. So it's actually very similar, and so that I you know I kind of played I played around with it a little bit just watching you know paddling with Connor and seeing him how he he holds his paddle like that and I'm like okay um, I'm not used to that because I'm you know like if I were to ever do that when I was like paddling canoe they would they would kick you out oh, of the canoe. what are you doing <laughs> yeah they would kick me out guaranteed <laughs> and so I've, I've kind of played around with it and I see like you know I've tried this out a little bit like maybe for starts of races like I'll use that or if I really want to get on a wave or a glide I'll like kind of move my you know in between switching sides and um, it's really like everyone has different technique. Everyone's body's built differently, and it just depends on how comfortable you are. Like, if you're more comfortable paddling like that, then go for it. If you're more p comfortable paddling, you know, with a wider, you know, I, I find that when I have a wider um, grip, more, on a wider your... grip, it's like I'm pulling way more water than like you know if I had like right. my arms like this, you know, right. paddling like that, like you know, w wide reach and really getting that length out, especially, you know, since I, I'm a little bit taller, like I can get that, I have no excuse. Right. And so I've definitely like found that I feel more comfortable when I when I have that like long stroke and, you know, f quick, quick strokes. And so long and quick. And yeah, that's a tough combination to have. Mm -hmm. Usually you go short and yeah. quick, right? Mm -hmm. uh, long and quick yeah, stuff. Yeah, long and quick is really, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder and then just really like focusing on the core and like engaging your core in those strokes and it's it's like it's a whole body thing it's not just in your upper right. body it's in your core it's in your legs big time like if you I find if I bend my legs my my knees more I get way more power and that's hard for me because um, I just tend to like lock my legs out sometimes like I noticed last year in the channel I was getting a little bit fatigue and all of a sudden I found myself on my tippy toes I'm like, what am I doing? That's probably because I did ballet for three years, but <laughs> I would, it was really weird, and that's like really bad. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So like, I've been, I've been trying to practice just like really bending my knees and like getting low because the lower you are, I think the more, you know, more leverage, yeah, you more get leverage out of you it, have, sure. and so that's really helped me. So there you go. Get low. Get low. <laughs> go, go long on that uh, on that reach, right? Yeah. Go for the reach and try to have reach and high cadence. Yeah. While being and low. find someone that you kind of look like, like you know, oh, I kind of paddle like that person, and go and study them. Like they're a really good athlete, you know, winning races, doing that, you know, doing well. Then like go and study their technique and perfect it. If you don't paddle like Connor Baxter, if you just aren't naturally like you know built like him, then don't go and study him, you know, like right. go find someone like if you paddle like Danny Ching, then, you know, go and study him. And I think what you pointed out too, body type mm -hmm. and like your form. Is everyone's different. Yeah, exactly. It, there's no real like rules in that. It's like whatever you're more comfortable with. Like. Okay, and now we're going to go to the ultimate question and the whole puzzle here we're having, trying to settle how do you hold that paddle when you go for the very varied stroke. You do the V on the shaft. Do you hold it sideways or this way? How, how do you go for it? I think, it? yeah, I hold it like, like that. that. So, yeah. okay, same yeah. as Jillian. Sometimes, I mean, right. I've tried that a couple times, but it right. feels really awkward. Okay, I yeah. I've, I've tried both, like either the V or the... Right. Yeah. And do you do it like that or like that? So, mm -hmm. knuckles on the outside? I don't think, I don't think no? so. Knuckles on the inside? No, that, yeah, that'd be awkward. Yeah, okay. like that. Knuckles on the inside. Knuckles on the inside. Okay. Yeah. All righty. So, there you have it. <laughs> From Tyler and Jeannie. We're getting very technical here. But it's good. People want to know that. 
Alrighty, so we're gonna go to a quick commercial break and when we come back, we're gonna go fitness and diet and BOP. So Taya Ganjini has a lot happening, a lot of bag of tricks. She's like on, coming from a very high Molokai win and she's been doing great. So stay tuned right after the break. Okay, and we are back on the Subconnect Live show, and uh, we are having an amazing, amazing weeks, a week of show, um, shows. See, I'm getting tired. We've done so many <laughs> interviews, but we got amazing Taya and Jenny right here. Uh, this year, she beat the record of the Molokai uh, Channel Crossing, came first, and uh, has been having incredible results in the racing scene. And uh, I want to talk. I know you're young. I don't know. Do, I don't know if you mind. I know this dangerous territory. But how old are you, Ty? I'm 19. 19. So as you can see, she's very young. One of the things I worry about when I ask about diet to 19-year-olds mm -hmm. is like, we might get the Cody Kerr box. Mm -hmm. I'm labeling it the Cody yeah. Kerr box. I'm answer. not really there with Cody. Okay, yeah. good, excellent. I wish I could be, but I can't. <laughs> I think we all wish, right? <laughs> but wish and maybe not, because after you have someone yeah. that just doesn't quite pan out. So. Tell us about your diet. I mean, cross training, I think fitness, we mm -hmm. kind of got an insight. You surf, you do prone, you yeah. probably still do outrigger mm -hmm. here and there. Anything else as far as the cross training? Um, I've actually gotten more into CrossFit. Okay. And so I've been doing a little bit more CrossFit. Um, and I've been staying with my friends, so like I haven't been able to go to CrossFit, but my friends have, have been doing Insanity. Insanity! Oh and my! And it is insane. I'm, I was kind of laughing at them, like seriously, like a video workout. Okay, like I was being kind of like you know, and I tried it and I was like dying because <laughs> it's intense cardio and I'm like wow, okay, like sorry guys, but this is really hard. <laughs> and so I've been doing a little bit of that and I try and do a little bit of yoga when I can, and just like stretching out and like really, really like um, a lot of foam rolling. So I have foam rolling, yeah. which is amazing, right? I love my foam roller. I have um, I have one that I travel with, like and it has like a little 
place where I can just put clothes or. And how are you? And what what type of foam roll uh, um, do you use? A, is it just like the regular foam roll? No, like about it's the this? one with the. I can't remember the name. Is it about this short? Yeah, it's like this short. So it's about the thicker uh -huh, one. It has a um, has ridges in it. Ah, yeah. because tell, tell most people, okay, so if you don't know, like if you paddle a lot and if you paddle for like long distances especially, mm -hmm. a lot of times like you're going to have very, very tight muscles. Oh, yeah. And yeah, the, these foam rolls allow you to really get in there mm -hmm. and try to Yeah, you can out. get, you can really roll out your shoulders and your legs and just like get in all the different areas where you're like, oh, I, I need to crack my back, but you know, I can't. So like it, it's really good for like just kind of like releasing that pressure and... Uh, this past summer is like that was a part of my like my training is like I did so much foam rolling and um, a lot of recovery stuff and um, yeah I, I go everywhere with my foam roller. <laughs> <laughs> so I almost got into it because uh, I I I had my muscles are way too yeah. tight. I was doing all kinds of like stretch act workouts mm -hmm. and they were just not hitting the spot to like undo a lot of those knots. And uh, I did some foam rolling, and uh, what really got to me was uh, tennis balls. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Tennis balls amazing. when you're driving. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's amazing. You put the tennis ball there, and the tennis ball really gets on. Oh, I yeah. tried all kinds of stuff, and I tried some of those massage balls. They were a bit too, the tennis balls too much yeah, for me. Or the cross ball because they're like a little bit. Yeah stiffer yeah. maybe mm -hmm. but uh they yeah when you're driving sometimes you come to stop and as you <laughs> stop it just adds in order like you know actually when the light turns green and you push the gas and it just takes off it just puts that extra pressure and just gets right in that knot yeah. and i was actually having a hard time it was cutting into my uh paddle time mm. because i was in pain yeah. you know i was putting less hours into it and uh, the tennis ball and now the foam roll mm -hmm. uh, can I really help both. you out. Yeah. I travel with both. And I, I try and, like, anytime I have, like, really, really tight um, hips or my back, if I'm having, like, you know, some trouble in my shoulder, like, I'll just lay on it and I'll just, like, it, it might hurt, but it's, like, that good pain, you know? Right. And just really get every, like, and move all the lactic acid and... Um, yeah, I'm, I've gotten really into like the, the fitness and diet side of it. And so there you go, insanity, <laughs> <laughs> foam rolls, tennis ball, yoga. That's good. Yeah, you just, got a good thing going there. If you can't be on the water 24 hours, you know, like all the time, then you got to like keep moving. In California, and, the water gets cold. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, diet. Yeah, diet. I am forced to eat basically lettuce and meat because I'm allergic to like I found out I went and did the, the whole test thing and supposedly I'm allergic to gluten dairy soy oh, cane wow. sugar cane sugar yeah. wow I'm like what and um and I have to stay away from like most caffeine and um and yeast and like just everything basically <laughs> so I I've gotten really and really creative I tried to got you know get creative with this whole diet because you can be really limited to what you can eat. And well, salad and proteins can be fun, it's right? It's really, yeah, and I love, that's what I like eating anyway, so like for breakfast, I'll make, um, I've been making omelets, and I'll, you know, throw in some, some green onion, and, you know, bacon when I can get it, because bacon's really good, and, um, or ham, or, you know, just kind of like mix it up, and I like to put a lot of different ingredients. I'm always like, okay, what can I put, what can I put in it, you know, like, because I can't have a lot of things, but right. like there's, there's a lot of options, really. Um, I love farmers markets. I've been there going to go. them over here, and they're amazing. So just getting a lot of fruits and veggies, and so I'll have eggs in the morning, and then for breakfast, I'll, I mean, for for lunch, I'll usually do like a, you know, salad or lettuce wraps and with chicken or, um, you know, steak for dinner. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So just keeping like you know that lean. Like I stay. I try and get my carbs when I, you know, when I need them, like before workouts, mm -hmm. and then after, um, really just like get the protein and, and you get your me. carbs through grains a lot yeah, of yeah like quinoa i can have quinoa and um and i drink a lot of like coconut water because i can't have like uh, i don't excellent. drink any soda i don't right. drink any juices like because they are you know usually high in sugar right. so i've been drinking like a lot of coconut water and water just water and coconut water is amazing yeah. with recovery as mm -hmm. well right yeah uh, so, so Okay, BOP is coming up uh, just a few days away. Uh, you're obviously one of the female powerhouses. Uh, <laughs> and uh, how are you looking forward to it? 
Oh, I, I always look forward to this event. It's The first time I came to it was in 2009, I think. It was the second year. And, I mean, I didn't really know what to expect. It was when I first got into stand-up paddling. And um, so I forget who told me, but someone's like, you got to come out for this event. And it's, it's just, like, super fun. And, like, everyone's out here. There's, like, usually waves. I'm like, okay, cool. So I, I came out, and there was waves that year. And it's just, like, chaos, you know? Like, I saw, like, boards everywhere, paddles. Like, people had, like gashes in their like head i'm just yeah. like what is going what is this like seriously that and was a wild year there was a, yeah. some head high there was some there yeah, was waves yeah, there were waves yeah there were some big waves so i i always look forward to like the carnage <laughs> i know italia has been freaking us out because it has been wild in previous years and the last year was the biggest turnout of about 400 paddlers yeah and this year there have been already apparently a thousand registered paddlers. So uh, and that? surf is up. There's a fourth yeah. house of head high surf. Should be fun. Well, you can handle For, that. But just you, it's the thing. Like you can be, you know, comfortable in the surf. Doesn't but matter. If somebody someone, takes you out. Someone takes you out. Someone's in front of you. Like you can't really do anything yeah. about it. Yeah, that's right. And it's, if you're going for that inside buoy turn, and oh, as yeah. you're going for it, there's comes a wave. You get knocked out sideways. You never want that wave hitting on the side of the board. But if it does, you're out. You're swimming, and the yeah. board is gone. So uh, <laughs> anyway, that's why it's exciting. There's a lot that can go wrong, but then right. it can be. That's what's so exciting that's what's about so it. That's so exciting about it. Yeah. And the stories that come from it after that's you right. hear people just like talking yeah. about it for the whole rest of the year. <laughs> so anyway, good luck. Thank Thanks you. a lot for coming in. Uh, you know, just always love seeing you. Like whether in Florida, Hawaii, or wherever it is, uh, <laughs> I think you've brought a lot to the sport. It's amazing Thank to you. see how you've come up in performance. It's great to hear too about your diet and that you love a tennis ball and a foam roll. Yep. <laughs> so uh, I got a friend on that front there too. <laughs> so good luck, thanks Talia, thanks. Uh, keep us posted. And uh, if you missed any one of the sections of the show, you can watch them, you can just click on the different sections right here. Uh, the start, and then we talked about gear, we talked about technique, fitness, you can skip to any one of those and uh, and watch what you want. And there's an amazing story in the beginning with Talia's channel crossing and the Molokai world record and the first time placement there. Also, she has some great tips on paddles and <laughs> techniques. And yeah, you want to listen to that. So thanks, Talia. And Thank stay you. tuned for the next, for the, uh, the next show. Uh, we might have Kailani coming up. Stay tuned.